Good evening, everyone. I thought you said there weren't a lot of people here. The room is packed. I'm nervous now. Shaking. Yes. Oh, the mic. Is that better? Thank you, Peter. As always, I appreciate it. Um, forgive me, I'm trying to find my PowerPoint because I'm not real good with technology. But listen, we have three hours, so I will figure this out. Just three hours? Let's see, all right? Something happened. Where is it? I think it got closed, so I will reopen it. You see? It was right here, but now it's gone. I did. It opened a blank PowerPoint. Yeah, then you can can go to. I do here. I know where it is. It's right here. I'll show you. Sorry, guys. You must you have me here. <laughs> a dream of mine is coming true. I've known Peter for what? Eleven years now? Ten years? And we I mean, we always talk about getting together more. We always talk about getting together more often because we enjoy each other's company, we learn from each other, we support each other. Um, and my dream's finally coming true because he's working on Thursday nights now. Watch what we wish for, yeah? But no, it's nice to see everyone. So w when you read multiple lives, um, what do you think? What pops in your head? Seriously. If somebody's going to say the R word, right? But let's go deeper. Reincarnation is an easy one. If you're, if you're here in the, a, a spirit to center, more than likely you believe in reincarnation, yeah? Let's go deeper. What are we really saying with multiple lives? What are we, what are we presupposing? Levels of, Levels of learning, all right. That's the future probably. Or, or the past, right? Depending on how you look at it. What else? Immoral. immoral, yeah. But we have a destination or no? Progress. There's one more thing I'm looking for. We're going to talk about it a, little, a lot tonight. Pre-existence of what? The spirit, yeah? Pre-existence of the soul. Um, spiritism, uh, true or false, spiritism invented the concept of reincarnation. False, right? Absolutely. Um, what's another name for reincarnation? If we go back, let's go back 2,100 years. Resurrection. Man, Jackie, you got this. Uh, resurrection, right? So did the Jews uh, create, did the, did the reincarnation or resurrection as it was called, did it initiate with Judaism? No way, right? It was way back, right? The Hindus, and before them. So it's not a new topic, right? Spiritism didn't create it, didn't invent it. We talk about it a lot. Um, we utilize teachings uh, of it a lot, but we didn't create it. So. Uh, Let's jump in. Uh, tonight's topic is always, I, I can't take any credit for it. Um, my friend Livia um, gave me a topic. I did some research, and uh, everything I'm going to talk about tonight comes from either the Gospel according to Spiritism or the Spirit's book uh, with, these que with these questions and answers listed. But we'll start right there, right? Resurrection and reincarnation. Um, synonymous to a certain extent, uh, but let's remember that resurrection presupposes um, that the body comes back to life, right? The, the person dies, the soul dies, but the soul returns in the same body, right? We know that's physically impossible, right? The body dies and it decomposes, right? We know the body can't come back. Um, this was so prevalent back in this time prior to Christ and during Christ's time that all of the tribes of Israel or all the tribes of, of Judaism uh, believed that, um, that you live again in this form of resurrection. Although they didn't know exactly what that meant or the form it took, they did believe that the, that the soul and the body, uh, the resurrection existed and it lived on. Just one tribe, uh, the Sadduc uh, Sad Sadducees, um, did not believe in this. They believed that everything dies with the body. But all the other tribes of, of uh, Judaism uh, definitely believed that we lived again um, and that just the manner obviously wasn't understood because we know from that long, right? When it dies, it decomposes. So that's where we start. Um, there's a definition for you, right? The return to life of the body that died. Reincarnation, on the other hand, um, actually the soul and the spirit lives on uh, to another form of life in another body. It's nice. That makes sense, right? The, the, the body has to be here to positively integrate the same life, right? The spirit decomposes. Make any sense so far?
that's been taken from that, different, different beliefs, different interpretations. Um, but these are quoted as the words of Christ. Now, in this section of the gospel that we're, we're taking this from, Christ is speaking uh, to Nicodemus, who is a senator, he's a Pharisee, one of the, you know, the elite classes of the time. Powerful man, um, not necessarily supposed to be believing in Christ, yeah? Um, so this is probably a meeting in private, right? Nicodemus probably is not too public about this. But he acknowledges to Christ, right, that definitely Christ is from God, right? That he's, he's a prophet, he's, he's here to teach us something. And he asked Christ, how, how is it that a man that's old re-enters the womb, right? So another Is flesh. There's no question about it. If, it, if, it's, if it's material, it's material. And whatever is born from the spirit is spirit. And it was clear that at this time that what he was saying was only the body proceeds from the body. The spirit is independent. So we don't know where the spirit comes from at this time, right? People didn't understand this. Christ obviously knew, right? But he's trying, he's attempting to help them understand um, with their knowledge at the time that the body is independent of the spirit. Um, they're not created at the same time, which is explained in the next part of that scripture, where he says, the human soul, right? The spirit blows wherever it wishes, and you hear its voice, but you do not know where it comes from or where it's going. If the body 
and the spirit were created at the same time. In other words, at birth, right? Um, we'd know where the spirit comes from. Christ would not be telling us this um, at the time if, if it was the fact that the spirit was created at the same time as the body. Because we don't know where it comes from or where it is going. We clear so far? Because this is deep, man. This is kind of old language, new language, trying to mix it all together. And then somehow tying it into what we're used to talking about here in the spiritual sense. But it's neat how it, it all comes together. Because it translates to, no one knows uh, what the spirit had been or what it will be. If the spirit or soul were created at the same time as the body, it would be obvious, right? We'd know where it came from. Since one would know its beginning. And, and this is the, the key point of uh, this section of the gospel. What they're explaining to us, right, in, a, in that spiritist perspective or in this current interpretation, given the knowledge that we have now, that we had at the time this was written, um, it consecrates the principle of the preexistence of the soul, which is how we started tonight. If we believe in multiple lives, we are acknowledging preexistence of the soul. There's no way around it, right? If, if you believe you've lived multiple lives, that I've lived multiple lives, that means my soul existed prior to this body. And this is the passage in the Bible that, that consecrates that. Um, there's no doubting preexistence of the soul and the plurality of existences uh, coming, coming directly from, from Christ at this time, thousands of years ago. I think it was lost to a certain extent, um, hence all the interpretations over the years, and we'll talk more about that. But this um, is very telltale of the mess, one of the messages that Christ was trying to tell us, that our spirit is created separate from our body, our spirit pre-existed our body, and after this body dies, the spirit continues for multiple lives. All right, we can all go home. That was easy. Yeah? No? Okay. So Matthew, uh, the book of Matthew is where this comes from. He, he wrote Christ's words. And this is, this is a little deep, and some would say it's a stretch, but um, it, it makes sense to me, and I hope I can convey the simplicity of it um, as well as, as I'd like to. But, but when we talk about um, resurrection or reincarnation and we talk about multiple lives, preexistence of the soul, um, uh, eternal life, uh, one life to the next, there's always those that we talk to or have the questions. They, a lot of people come to a spiritual center for the first time after they face some type of trauma or they're feeling some kind of pain in their lives. And they come from various backgrounds, you know, traditional Christian religions, Catholicism, there's uh, atheists that walk in the door, um, Hindus, Buddhists, you name it. You know, people come to a place like this um, for the first time, usually because they're facing some adversity and they're asking questions. And one of the questions is, well, where does it say in the Bible anything about reincarnation? So we showed you one verse um, from, uh, from Matthew. Here's another one that's pretty prolific, I believe. Um, Christ is quoted as saying, since the time of John the Baptist until the present, the kingdom of heaven has been taken by violence. He goes on to say that he himself, Elijah, right, who must, he himself is Elijah who must come, right? In other words, for us to believe, to, to overcome this, right? And then he tells us, remember, that John is alive. The spirits are telling us this in, 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 the, spirits, in the gospel. Remember that John is alive at this time, and Christ is telling us that John is Elijah. Um, so while he's talking at this very time, he's talking about since the time of John the Baptist until the present. John's alive and baptizing people in the river at this time. He's talking about John in the past tense. Then he says, he himself is Elijah who must come. In other words, John the Baptist is the reincarnation of the spirit or the soul of Elijah who is a prolific uh, prophet uh, of Judaism uh, prior to this. Um, Elijah died, time passed, born again, right, by spirit uh, and water, right, into the body of John the Baptist. And this is Christ telling us that uh, John the Baptist is Elijah reincarnated. And to some, that's a stretch. But it makes sense after you, after you consider it all in context. The other piece to that that we have to kind of put into perspective is when we talk about the, the kingdom of heaven has always been taken by violence up until that time, right? Was John the Baptist violent? You guys remember the story? Was he a violent man? No, he's pretty loving, yeah? Pretty peaceful, um, helping, right? Violence in that scripture represents 
Mosaic law. What do, what do you think of when I say Mosaic law? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, right? You steal, they cut off your hand, right? Stuff like that. Um, the extermination of infidels, right? To take back the promised land. The Jews were enslaved, right? They were promised freedom, right? So it was all about getting back what's yours, doing unto others as they do unto you, an eye for an eye, right? John the Baptist, on the other hand, John the Baptist, on the other hand, right? Elijah in this life, right? The reincarnation of Elijah. What's he doing? Is he practicing the Mosaic law? Absolutely not. He's baptizing people in, in the name of uh, uh, charity and kindness, right? He's practicing the new law, right? The good news, the gospel, according to Christ, right? Um, he learned this, obviously, uh, through his lives. And he was there during the time of Christ, following that example, teaching others um, about this new way, that we don't have to kill, we don't have to take an eye for an eye. We can be loving, charitable, and kind. Um, and that in itself will help us transform. Make sense? All right. So, all this into context, um, the doctrine of reincarnation does a couple of things. It tells us where we came from, to a certain extent. Where is that? Anybody, everybody know? Where do we come from? Spiritual Created by God, right? Simple, lacking knowledge, right? Do you remember your last life, Peter? Thank God, yeah? Right? But we know we had one, right? <laughs> Me too. I'm not, I'm not singling you out on that one. I'm talking about all of us. But, but we know that we came originally from, from God, created simple and lacking knowledge, right? All in the same place, same starting point, right? We live these successive lives. Where are we going? Anybody know? Where are we going? Ultimately, we're going to evolve, right? To become this pure, perfect spirit, all right? So we know where we came from. We know where we're going. Do any of us know exactly what's going to happen in between? No, right? So that kind of explains why we're on earth, right? To, to write our own destiny, to, to, to evolve, to, to do our best to, to get closer to that ultimate destination. And, and that very essence of this doctrine of reincarnation, all those pieces, where we came from, where we're going, why we're here, it justifies all of these apparent injustices uh, that exist in this life. How many of you ever said life isn't fair? No, not you. No, I don't believe you. No way. Not fair. Why me? I see a black cloud over some of your heads. I'm kidding. Right? None of us are unlucky. None of us are chosen by God over others. None of us are more loved or less loved. Um, life is extremely fair because of this doctrine of reincarnation. We'll talk more about that. But no one is, is better or worse. We're all exactly where we've placed ourselves with our free will. Um, they go on to tell us here in the Spirit's book that without the principle, right, of the preexistence of the soul and the plurality of existences, most of the maxims in the gospel are unintelligible. Are unintelligible. And, and I'm convinced. Um, I didn't write this, but when I read it, it's like, yeah, I've been saying this for a year. Right? That's not my idea, though, right? There's so many contradictory interpretations. How many different forms of Christianity are there? Anybody know? I don't either. I bet you there's thousands, right? All based on the same scripture all based on the life of Christ on earth and how he died. But there's thousands of interpretations, right? Well, because when we take a look at that life without the acceptance of uh, these other things, there's so many, can be so many contradictory interpretations for sure. Um, and this is, these are my two cents. This is not from the book, right, from the, from the doctrine. Um, and, and don't hold this against me. Don't judge me, as we say. I think we're all wrong. Every one of these different philosophies and religions, right? Um, spiritism included. What we have right now is our ability to understand with our intelligence of the time what this stuff means. As we evolve, as we grow, we will have a better understanding. And there are answers that we can't give you now that I guarantee you we will acquire in subsequent lives as we evolve morally, as we evolve intellectually. Um, and I have a great friend who uh, never argued with this guy about religion. Um, even though he believes one thing, I believe another. We have really great talks about these things. And he's at the point now where he, he won't agree with me, but he would say, because I always tell him, listen, we're going to compare notes when we meet up 
later on. And, and now he chuckles and he doesn't, he doesn't disagree with me anymore. Um, but he has a very strict belief on what happens when you die and where you go if you don't do this, this, and this. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. All right, we good? Whew. I got through it, Bob. That's a tough one. All right, so what's the purpose of incarnation? If we, if we believe in pre-existence of the soul, if we believe in multiple lives, why? What's the purpose? What's it all about? Well, here's the answer. Right? God imposes incarnation for the purpose of leading spirits to perfection. We know that Christ uh, is a pure spirit. We know that his, his example of how to live was shown to us with the way he walked the earth. Right? Um, we know that our goal is to evolve to that, that level of perfection. Well, how do we do it, right? Well, we come to Earth, or we go to other planets, where, wherever we are at the time, whatever level of moral consciousness that we are at, we reincarnate there, right? To continue. As long as we're on Earth, we're either expiating some past wrong, right? Fixing something, correcting something that we've either done wrong or chosen not to do in a previous life, and or as a mission. Um, mission being to undergo all of the vicissitudes of corporal existence. That was a big word. I had to look it up. Right, vicissitudes. That's all the drama in life. Right? The things that come our way that test us, right? Um, from uh, from uh, money to drugs to to um, to vice to um, temptation, our passions, all these things that we have to overcome that we're faced with. And I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm going to overcome all these things in one life. Yeah. But each life we face come back and try and continue. Um, so there's the expiation, right? The ability to come back, face these challenges, and overcome. But that's our purpose, to overcome these things, to, to conquer them. Incarnation also places spirits in situations where they can do their share of the work of creation. Because let's face it, we're individuals, we're independent individual spirits, but does that mean we only help ourselves? Absolutely not. We help each other. I can't grow without you guys. You can't grow without me. We are all uh, connected, intertwined, if you will. Hence, my, my story I like to tell about living under a bridge. Right? If I wanted to avoid temptation, I could just go live under a bridge. I could go out to a deserted island where they got coconut trees. And I could fish. I don't know. I could eat. I'd never have any temptation. Right? There'd be no this, this, or this. Whatever your thing is, whatever slows you down, whatever speed bumps you guys hit, whatever my bumps are, right? Just get away from it. That's how I escaped um, uh, addiction earlier in life, not to go too deep in my own story. But I was doing some stuff and not liking what I was doing. I disappeared. I, I joined the Army. <laughs> I, said, I said, I'm going to get clean just enough so I can pass that test, and I'm going to go away. I disappeared for three months before I came back. And what I did to avoid any of that coming back is I never talked to those people again. <laughs> I just got out of that circle. And to this day, I've been clean, yeah? Thank God. But along the way, you're faced with a temptation. So I couldn't stay away from it forever, but I took a little break. It helped me make that break. And then um, little by little, you incorporate uh, yourself back into so society, and you're faced with those things. So I needed a break, but I couldn't stay away together because if I'm never around it, if I'm never tempted, um, where am I really growing? Because I just escaped it. I still didn't face it. So that's my story. We all have a story about these things, you know? But that's me. But the point here is everything in nature, uh, we're connected, and there's this solidarity. If I'm out of balance, other things are out of balance, right? Until, w as we live this life in this human form, our actions with society, our actions with our neighbor, um, as we all elevate ourselves morally, guess what happens to the planet? The planet elevates, the moral consciousness of the planet. Is it fair to say that we live in a better world today, a less violent world than we did 200 years ago? Mm -hmm. Right? Definitely, right? Even though there's, <laughs> we have more access to negative things, right? I mean, it's instant, like a 24-hour news cycle now, right? We can see a lot of negatives. But if you look at life itself and, and society as itself, we're definitely elevated more 200 years later than we were, right? And that's going to continue. And we're all contributing to that. We did, didn't we? Man, you're good with math. I wouldn't have done that that quick. That's good. Uh, but you're right. The population's huge. We have more access to people, more access to do harm. But yet, overall, um, we've, we've grown morally. Uh, 
doesn't always feel that way, but we have. All right, enough of that. Um, so here's the question. This is from the Spirit's book. Forgive me, I don't remember the question number. Um, but it, the, the question Kardec asked the Spirit's were, is, is incarnation necessary for spirits who have followed the path since the beginning? So what does that predispose? I would suggest that some spirits are created more elevated than others. Well, we already know the answer, right? There's no such thing. We all started in the same place, right? So what's the answer he was given? God created all, right, all spirits, simple and lacking knowledge, gaining instructions through their struggles and tribulations of corporeal life. God would not make some blissful without their having deserved it through hardship and work. So that goes right back to the beginning. We all started in the same place, simple and lacking knowledge. And would you believe of all weeks, I don't have my slide up there with a graph, for those of you who've been here before. <laughs> my favorite slide, it's almost in every talk I do, and I didn't put it in this one. But it's very clear, it shows us starting simple at the bottom and working our way up to perfection. How do we get there? How come some people are more blissful in this life than me, or, or than you? Because right? of their efforts in the past, yeah? Where each and every one of us are exactly where we put ourselves, based on what? Cause and effect, yeah? I did it, now I'm paying the price. I didn't do it, I'm paying the price. I'm exactly where I am in this body right now because of choices I've made a second ago, a decade ago, 10 lifetimes ago. I'm the sum total of my existence or my experiences or my actions or the lack thereof. Because not doing a bad thing isn't necessarily doing the right thing, right? We can, we can be at fault for choosing not to choose. Right? So it's not just what we do, it can be what we don't do at times. Um, so that's where we started and we're, we, some of us seem more blessed perhaps than others, some of us seem to be lucky, some of us seem to be unlucky, no such thing. We are all where we wound up because of our actions. All right, so how can a soul who did not reach perfection during its corporeal life complete the work of its purification. You guys know the answer to this already, right? What is it? Living another life, right? Yep. right? If we didn't finish, like if I guess if I finish it this life, I'm not coming back. See you guys. Bye. Right? But most of us are coming back, right? I know I'm coming back. But at some point I won't. But the, the answer here is by submitting to the trial of another existence. How definite is that, though? Some of us think, I believe I'm guilty of this at times. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll put it off. I'll get that in the next life. You know? I'm only human. But how many people are there? You seem to know numbers. How many people in the world? Well, 300, just 300, uh, yeah, just 300 million in America, seven, right? Seven billion in the world. 300 million in America. In the world, about seven billion. Seven billion. How many spirits are there, you think? Seven billion. Well, on uh, Earth, uh, on three, Earth. Three times that amount. Three times that amount. So does that mean you die today and you're reborn tomorrow? No, it could be decades. You guys ever read Heaven and Hell? There's a chapter in that book, a story in that book about a spirit that was in a coma, a spiritual coma, for centuries. Right? You don't just come back. Right? We're blessed to get this other life, this oh. other, yeah. <laughs> I have three. Oh, that's true. You're right. I see your point. Thank you. I thought you were teasing me. I, I was. Okay. <laughs> All right. But you're right, right? There's, there's let the birth rate is lower, right? Nation, uh, worldwide. Um, there's a list. There's a line, right? You don't just come back, right? It could take a long time between existences. So what does that tell us? Make the most of our time right now. Do the best we can, right? Um, so this, this new existence, this trial of another life, right? It, w this happens in order to purify itself. The soul goes through a transformation which requires work performed during the trial of corporeal life. And then they stress, we all live many lives. And it's through these lives that we grow and evolve. <laughs> That's funny. Every time I'm looking for a pen, I, I don't even have pockets on my shirts anymore, but I'm, I'm looking for it in a pocket that I don't have. Crazy. So. Reincarnation's purpose is stressed to us here, right? It's is the expiation and progressive improvement of humankind. Reincarnation stops once the soul has stripped itself of all its impurities. That's our answer right there. We will not return in a body once we've stripped ourselves of all of our impurities. How far are we? 
Am I, am I 90%? Am I 80%? Maybe I'm 22%. I don't know. Correct. The more we learn, the more we know. Correct. And that's, and that's the last sentence, yeah? Each at their own pace uh, until becoming a pure spirit. We, we are the, the, the masters of our destiny. We know the destiny. We know where we're going. But we can make that a million lives. We can make it a hundred lives. Who knows? Right? But the more we accomplish each life we have, the further we evolve morally. Okay? Make sense? Awesome. All right. Here's a tough one. Right? On what is the doctrine of reincarnation based on? What do you think? Should we pull it out of a hat? The justice of God. All right. Remember we talked about luck, no luck, gray cloud. Some people seem better off than others. No luck to that. It's called justice. All right. Here's the, here's the analogy they give us. A good father always leaves the door of repentance open to his children. I'm a dad. I can't think of a single thing that one of my kids could do that I wouldn't love them. I might be mad at them. I might be disappointed. But I, I didn't know what uncon... How you doing, buddy? Please have, have a seat, man. We'll be, we'll be, fi we'll be finished. Well, have, have a seat. Listen, listen to the lecture. Please, please, welcome. Sit down, listen. Well, here's, here, here's what I know for sure. Here's what I know for sure. You are welcome here, sir. And I think we got some clothes in the back here. Happy to, happy to hook you up. <laughs> well, listen, I'm sure we'd be happy to help you. Why don't you sit down and listen to the rest of the lecture? Yeah, and, and, and you're, you're welcome. I would love for you to sit and stay. Br bring it inside. Bring it inside if you want. I'm, I, and, I, and I can't... Well, yeah, well, after the talk, if you want to come on back, we'll, ho we'll hook you up, all right? <laughs> Tim's out front. So we all face hardship, yeah? We all have our own um, issues to face, and um, we all do this at our own pace, in our own way. And one of the best things we can do for ourselves and for other people at their various stages of, of struggle is pray for them, yeah? And do what we can to help. So um, we will do our part. Um, where was I? Aren't we all children of God, yeah? God's children. So I was telling you about my children, and I can't think of a thing that they could do where I wouldn't love them. Well. I'd like to believe, and I think you'd agree, that we're all God's children. And as much as we may stray, as much as we may not follow that path at times, I believe, as, as uh, the Spirit's book or the Gospel writes here, that we're all God's children, and the door's always open to repent, to expiate, uh, to work our mission. And it's through these multiple lives and through this path um, that we do that they remind us here that it's, it's only among selfish humans that we find iniquity, insatiable hatred, 
and unforgiving punishment. In other words, we as humans can hate. We as humans can kill um, at the expense of others to grow. We can take from others. We can use people as tools, um, as stepping stones. Um, because we're at that level of moral development right now. Uh, in our own way, different, all of us, different levels. Um, but as we progress, right, um, we will grow beyond these, these three things, and we will become more, more Christ-like. And by the grace of God, we are granted the ability to do that. We are not condemned to the fiery pits of hell. Right? We're not condemned to eternal punishment. Um, no matter what one of my kids do, I might punish them in some way, right? Um, but it's not forever. My heart is filled with love for them, and my job is to try to help them grow, as is God's commitment to me. Right? He's going to give me the tools I need to grow, to move beyond these things. We good? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So question uh, 222. This is actually, it's, we have another hour, so we should take a break? No? No? No, just a couple more minutes. Just a couple more minutes, I swear. And, and this is where, if you get a chance, it's question 222 is, is, is a very simple question with a very long answer. There's five or six pages to question 222. It's a whole chapter by itself. Um, and it talks about a lot of stuff. But let's, let's break this up in, in a couple sections um, briefly so I don't beat a dead horse, as they say. But let, let's assume that you're neutral on reincarnation. Right? You don't really have an opinion. It could be half of us say it's an equal likelihood of truth for multiple lives or a single existence. Right? We're kind of in the middle. We, we, I, my job is not to convince you, but I'm going to lay out the facts. Not from a spiritist perspective, but just from a logical perspective. Let's start with single existence. We have one life. So we're born. Where was the spirit? What is the spirit with single existence? Are we still under the assumption that it pre-existed the body? Can we believe that? Probably not, right? Because if we just have one life, what was the spirit before that life? More than likely, it's not possible. In a single existence, how come, how do we explain Babies dying in the womb. Babies dying at birth. Children having terrible diseases. Men and women cut down in their prime from devastating disease. How do we explain that if we have one life? How come I live to be 90, let's say, and other people are lost at 28, 14? If there's just one existence, what, what determines that? Right? Um, how do we explain with a single existence children that uh, are precocious, if you will, or um, advanced? They, they seem to have these ideas that, uh, or they're experts or child prodigies um, in certain things. They, they Remember that movie or that, that uh, it was a clip? I think they made a movie out of it as well. Uh, was he six or seven years old? And he knew everything there was about World War II aircraft. Right, he could name parts, he could name pilots. At some point, he even remembered his name, and they did the research, and sure enough, he's a real pilot in World War II. Mo Mozart. Mozart? Mozart was like... Four. Right. Mine was six. <laughs> it wasn't very good. There were just a few people there, but, but I tried. So how do we explain that in single existence? Right? Now, let's take the other side of this coin. Multiple lives. With multiple lives... How do we explain early death of anyone, child, adult, disease? Some people survive terrible things once, twice, three times. Some people don't, right? Well, if we believe in multiple lives and the preexistence of the spirit, what do we know? We know that the body's born with a spirit that's lived before, right? It's elevated to wherever it was when it passed, comes back um, in another body at that level, right? Intelligence isn't lost. Character, moral development isn't lost. Don't have the same body. You don't have the bank account. You don't have the, 
the clothes, you don't have uh, the same family necessarily physically, but you have the spirit that you had before that stays the same, and you have the intellectual and the moral fiber character. Does that also help make sense of why, even though here we are in the same room, in the same county, the same city, same center, right? All of us, somewhere on our journey in multiple lives. Very similar, would you agree? I'm a little cuter than some of you, right? Some, some of you are better looking than me. You know what I mean. My point is, we're a lot alike, yeah? Maybe different color, different heritage, different health condition. But for the most part, we're a lot alike. And yet, we're totally different. Is that because God picked me for something, picked you for something else? Well, in one existence, if we only had one life, what would we be left to presume? That it was all a DNA? Right? DNA doesn't predict your socioeconomic status, necessarily. DNA doesn't predict um, a lot of things. It definitely predicts biology, right? But with multiple lives, it totally makes sense why, in my very own family, right? Same environment for the most part, um, same socioeconomic situation, why I was able to escape some of this stuff and my brother wasn't, right? Why my sister did her thing, why she's doing what she does, why we're, we're same family, same elements for the most part, yet um, I don't seem to have a black cloud as much as my brother. Th things like that. Is that. Am I making sense or am I rambling at this point? I'm making sense. What else does multiple lives explain? It explains why we can, we can accept tragedy, why we can accept adversity, and why we can put our head on the pillow every night and have faith and believe that tomorrow can be a better day. And that even if I, even if I had a bad day, even if I haven't overcome my issues, I know that I have the ability to amend, to overcome. And if I don't quite get it done before I pass in this life, that I'm not going to go backwards. I'm not going to become a dog or a cat or, or, um, or something like that, a bird, I don't know. I'm going to come back in another body at some point. It could be centuries, it could be not. But I'm going to work, I'm going to grow, and I'm going to amend for those things I did wrong. Uh, the people I offended, the people I hurt, the bad choices that I made. Think of the surgeon in this life. Right? He fixes with his hands. In the previous life, that surgeon could have been a soldier killed with a knife or a bayonet. A life before that um, could have done something else bad with his hands, but comes to this life gifted with hands and putting it to good as opposed to, um, to bad. And then finally, um, multiple lives, pre-existence of the soul, and, and the doctrine of reincarnation explains why Free will is so amazingly beautiful. I can choose right now to make a better choice. I can choose right now to have faith. I can choose right now to know that my loved ones that have gone before me are here to help me. I can choose right now to know that no matter what adversity is coming my way tomorrow, I can overcome. And I have the best example. We have the best example of how to do that. Christ left us the gospel. He left us his good news. He left us the ability to receive intuition from our guardian angel. Right? God gave us that. And Christ showed us that that's real. We're not alone. We're here for each other as a community. We're here protected by spirits that have gone before us, praying for us, shining light over us at your darkest hour, at your most difficult challenge. You're not alone. So take that with you tonight. Have faith in that. And thank you for your time, your attention, and laughing at my silly jokes. I appreciate it.